Hello, hello, and welcome to the Teensy Leader Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have Mr. Adam Teachout. Hi, Adam. Hey, Cody. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. This is so exciting. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> you look so happy to be oh, here. It's, a, it's, a, it's awesome. I like the shirt and the glasses. Thank you so much. You came well prepared. Thank you. You know, you, you, you dress good, you look good, you feel good, you sing good. You just do good things. You, talking about yourself, right? I always, dude. That's, that's what's up, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Adam, why don't you tell everybody just uh, maybe a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, give, me, give me your name, your age, pronouns, where you're from, just like the list. And, and then like a background on like your artistry. All right. My name is Adam Teachout, and I am 31 years old, and uh, my pronouns are he, him, and, um, well, what was the other one on the list before I go into where the you, background? Where, where are you yeah. born? Where are you from? Okay, I'm from uh, Flint, Michigan, yes, so for those of us that are from Michigan, understand that we just show where we're from by pulling out the mitten here. We just go, oh, I'm from Flint. Flint, Michigan. Don't drink the water. But we drove. We we, we did. Well, we did drive here. We my uh, dad got uh, engaged uh, to Missy McQuaddy, who lived in Reno, Nevada, back in two thousand, and then we relocated from Flint to Reno, Nevada, back in two thousand one. Mm. So yeah, so that means it's two thousand. 22 now, so that means I've been here 20, for 20 years, 20, 21, 21 years. years. Yeah, 21 years now. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. So I'm pretty much from here. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're pretty much I'm from here. here yeah, when yeah. I was 10 years old, I was born in 1990, so now 31. We can all do the math, but I'll save you the time. <laughs> Flint, Reno, done. Yep. Um, real fast, before, before we go on just about you as an artist, we're actually here to plug... This right here. Yes. Maybe you, should, you could tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, sorry. I, I only had a black and white copy this morning. Unfortunately, it's not in color. But yes, um, my barbershop quartet, Never Too Late, is throwing a free concert for the community on June 4th at 7.30 p.m. at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Uh, that's 1135 12th Street in Sparks. Okay, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the area, that's uh, right, right behind Sparks Public Library. It's in the same parking lot, right behind uh, Sparks High School as well. Um, yeah, my quartet, we just qualified for the international quartet competition. Uh, and now we have a month to prepare for the international competition. <laughs> so we just qualified. And we didn't know if we were going to be able to go. The uh, international competition is going to be held in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. Uh, so we just qualified for that. We had to cross over a scoring threshold to qualify. So, And we did. So that's super exciting. It's taken 40, 14 years of hard work yeah. in the genre specifically to cross that threshold with uh, three other people at the same time and a whole full quartet to go. Um, but yeah. That's what's going on, and uh, we're throwing a uh, fundraiser. It's free concert. Donations are are welcome because we're we've got six thousand dollars to raise to cover travel expenses, and every little bit helps. And we'll put uh, all the links for everything, all the to information for. Uh, yeah, do you have a GoFundMe? We do have a GoFundMe. Nice. Yeah, we'll put the links for all of that stuff. Um, is there anywhere else that people could donate to you for uh, you, such things? Well, we will have just a, in person at the at the concert. We will have a donation place where you can drop checks or anything uh, money related that you want to give, of course. And there's no obligation to give at all mm -hmm. to get in. We we honestly, our main goal is to bring barbershop awareness to the community, to spread it to the youth because it's so much fun, and fun really is key to longevity and musicianship. Because a musician's journey is a long time. It's seven to 15 years, you know? Yeah. So in order to, like, create an environment of joy that you love to be in, you know, having music that's fun is super, is super helpful. 
So maybe you could tell us uh, about your specific background with music. You and I kind of know each other from the musical theater realm of Reno. Um, yeah. And oh, gosh, have we, <laughs> what shows have, have we done shows? I yeah. Think... I, we, you started the producers and we did a few weeks mm-hmm. of that together and that was a blast. And then we, uh, we did, 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 were you in Boy Who Spoke With Animals? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't in that. But I, I know that we've crossed paths many crossed times. Paths, yeah. And we we've lived in the same theater world and mm-hmm. we're there for all the same auditions and all the things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. whether we actually committed to a show together or not, I can't really remember. I just remember <laughs> yeah. seeing you everywhere. Yeah, you're pre- yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you're you're right there in all the theater memories for sure. So Yeah. Um uh tell us about all the other stuff music wise you do. I mean, uh because you, to me, are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to music. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you so much. Where did I? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I get complimented, uh, and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so, well, oh my God. Go well, ahead. <laughs> what was the question? Um, tell us about your, your background with music, just your, your journey with music, this 7 to 15-year journey of musicianship well, you speak of. The... Could we get maybe Adam Teachout's yeah. 7 to 15-year journey? Yeah, well, the 7 to 15 year journey that I'm referring to is kind of like that initial bond and relationship that you build with music so that you can rely upon it to bring you fulfillment on the darkest days of your life. Mm -hmm. But my personal musicianship's journey really started when I was a born I was uh, my dad was a music teacher, elementary music educator, professional French horn player, very active performer. My mother's a semi-professional clarinet player. Um, I don't know about semi-professional. She's very good. Uh, my grandmother was a performing pianist. Uh, my oldest sister, Sarah, uh, she was playing the piano from the earliest memory, earliest of my memories. Mm-hmm. And my my next oldest sister, Jill, has just I just remember her just out singing Charlotte Church on the CDs when I was a kid, you know. So we were just, it was just a kind of a musical household. And my dad, not only was he doing a bunch of professional gigs, he was super involved in all the music at church. Um, So he would put me to work at church as a, even as four years old, singing in front of the congregation, you know. And I went to a private school where my dad also worked as the music minister there. And so they had a relationship with me, so they would put me doing a lot of musical stuff for the whole school as a young child as well. So I had a lot of, you know, church performing as a <laughs> as a five, six-year-old child, you know, kind of singing with a choir backing and an organ backing, you know. So I kind of, I wish I had footage of that, but I yeah. don't. All I have are the memories and not being not being even really nervous at all because it was just kind of something we all did, you know, in the family all the time. And that was that was just normal, you know, from that that time on and then uh yeah, as I didn't um I I was I started out with string instruments and dancing, not singing. Mm-hmm. I actually started out with playing violin and then that that lasted for maybe a year when I was 6 and then I moved on to cello when I was between seven to eight to nine years old. Okay. And then I ended up breaking like my cello three or four times. (laughs) In that that period. So my my dad get my dad didn't he got me a cello. It was one of the cheaper cello for that you get for kids because a regular cello is gonna be too big. But it was a regular cello and but it had a soft case so it would go bonk around all the time. On lockers, because, yes, my elementary school back in Michigan had lockers. So I would haul the my cello around, and I would break the bridge on it all the time. And it would drive my dad nuts because we'd have to go get it, go get it fixed go get all the time. So he's just like, you are done with the cello, my son. You will be moving on. And I was excited for that because I wanted to try brass because my dad was a French horn player. So I actually picked up the French horn. By the time I got into sixth grade, mm. and uh, I was I I really liked to play the French horn because I felt like I could play it by ear. I felt like it came so naturally to me, but it also made me get really lazy on my music theory, wanting mm. to learn music theory and those other skills because mm. I didn't I wasn't held back 
by not being able to read the music, I was able to just kind of hear the melody and then just play it on the French horn. So I would yeah. pass all my music quizzes and stuff in middle school, and I would never bring my music to school. I would never have music. <laughs> I would just I would just pull out my instrument and be able to just parrot what everybody else was playing. Yeah. And nobody would tell on me, but they would all get mad because they'd be like, you don't even have music. <laughs> I was in Mr. Scarborough's seventh grade class. Mr. Scarborough's the band was the band director over at Pine Middle School. I can say yeah. that now. Mm -hmm. I didn't use sheet music in that class ever. He probably knew. He'll probably remember. He, he, probably, it's no surprise. He's like, you weren't that special. He's going to find this podcast. <laughs> what he's, a typical middle schooler. Right? He's going to find this podcast. And <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's going to he's going to come find you afterwards. Right. Watch out. And uh that's the mid and then in middle school is when I really kind of started like recognizing people in the that were also kind of deeper into that musician's journey that we're talking about. Kind of there's in middle school, in an elementary school, there's a separation, but that separation starts to become much more dramatic by the time you get to middle school. Mm -hmm. There are people that you can tell that they've been on stage before, mm -hmm. and they're astronomically better at all the things than everybody else, because then you've got the new people that are just getting fresh into it. Yep. So I started making some relationships with people that were evident that they were on the musician's journey with me. A few of those people are like, William Bauman was in the. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a local I, legend. I I think I'm dude. pretty sure I know Galena William Bauman. High School. Yeah, yeah, yep. we were in the same class. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he was. Yeah, he was in Drumline. Yeah, he was he's in the. And now he plays Navy with Marines. The, he plays with the Marine Band. I think Marine. Now. Yeah, that's what he. I'm pretty sure he yeah. always said he was gonna go do that. Yeah, it's like that was the yep. goal. That was the plan. I always loved and hated William so much because how good he was, and he, he was, was such a kind dude at the same he was time. Very good. Dude. Very humble. You know, mm -hmm. he he was he was one. Um, uh, who was the other one? There was a there was a guy at Huffaker that played the harp. I can't remember his name, but he was incredible. There were a few other people. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I Henry the harp, play, Huffaker. The harp Huffaker. <laughs> yeah. So, but you start <laughs> uh, you start making those relationships and recognizing those people and kind of started forming your social groups at that time with other musicians. Mm -hmm. The people that are serious kind of really look for those relationships to kind of, you know, like, oh, how can we come together to be friends and be musicians at the same time so we can have yeah. music goals together, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and then uh, by the time it was eighth grade, I had dented uh, I, again, again. I dented up my French horn bell so bad, like three or four times when I was in middle school. <laughs> and my what dad you, spent so much money. What? What's trying, what's so, with that? You just so, you <laughs> no, no. That's why you're a singer now. I, yeah, that's. I'm getting to that. <laughs> okay, hold on. But but long story short, yes. So like, yes, but we. Uh, I, I transferred middle schools. I went. F I moved from Pine Middle School in seventh grade, and then I went to Swope Middle School, and I had Mrs. Hegland, who is a legendary music teacher in this area. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. She's now one of my colleagues. It's super exciting. But she was my middle school band teacher over there, and I continued on with French horn uh, at Swope. And, yeah, I just, I just kept denting the damn thing, you know? <laughs> Does that affect the sound? No, it just makes my father cringe whenever I watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, be like, how, you, how, how could you? Po I've been playing the French horn for forty years. I've never had a bell look like this. What are you? What have you done? You know, three times. Yeah. How long it, did it take for three oh, times? Oh, it was so bad. A it, week? Well, I mean, yeah. I Two mean, weeks. Who gives a middle schooler a brass instrument and a soft instrument case? You know, <laughs> who gives a fourth grader a cello and a soft instrument case? We le we learn from these things, but. Honestly, it was just so expensive, and uh, I had started. Uh, my parents made me go to a singing camp with my sister that summer, actually mm -hmm. at the University of Michigan. When I went back to visit my mom, mm -hmm. um, so University of Michigan uh, is an incredible music school, and uh, man, I went to the singing choir camp, and everything just kind of clicked. Like, yeah, it was okay that I could just do everything by ear immediately. Yeah. And all the things I didn't have any sheet music, there was like there was a lot less shaming. Also, I like to talk a lot. So choir people are a lot more gabby than the other band people. So I felt more around my people. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of found my people I had a really great musical experience at the 
at this music camp. And that really kind of made me go, hmm, okay, yeah, this could be really great for me, and I don't have to keep lugging around instruments and breaking them and getting <laughs> these huge <laughs> dramatic altercations over my musicianship at home. And, yeah, and then I met Mr. Gaunt, who was my sister's music teacher over at Reno High, and he came to Swope Middle School, pulled me out of class, because he was the choir director over at Swope, but I wasn't in choir, so I never met him. But he asked me, he's like, hey, would you like to audition for my advanced choir at the high school? And I'm like, sure. So he had me sing Happy Birthday in front of the seventh grade choir. I remember it being so nerve wracking, though. I was like, oh, my God. That's so crazy. Not but like I did church. it. <laughs> yeah, it was like on a spur of the moment. He's like, here, just sing me Happy Birthday. And there was a room full of seventh graders. I was an eighth grader. It was like, oh, I've never <laughs> done anything. Well, it's not that I'd never, I hadn't done anything like that in a long time. But I did get into the advanced choir, which was super exciting. And then I remember in high school, like the floodgates of, yes, this makes sense, you know, really opened up when I got into that choir atmosphere mm -hmm. because we did uh, Eric Whitaker my freshman year, and I was singing the tenor one part by myself because we had, didn't have a lot of numbers. So I was singing like a one-person section, and I just immediately picked it up, and I loved it, and I didn't realize like how – Special that kind of is <laughs> refreshment to come in and sing of, of their own part on that. But we just had fun. My sister sang her own part in her section too, except for uh, I can't remember the exact details of all that. So alumni, don't hate me if you're watching. <laughs> but the voicing of Eric Whitaker's "Go Lovely Rose" our freshman year, I don't remember exactly. But I remember it was really fun, and it really empowered me to like take a take over ownership of my own part in like a musical ensemble for vocals. So as it was, it was sophomore year, I went to the Allstate Festival down in Las Vegas and I saw a barbershop quartet, a high school barbershop quartet performing on the stage. And I was like, oh, I could do that. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I could totally do that. And there are guys in my choir that are better than these guys singing with these guys. So like maybe we could get something. Maybe we could go come down here and do all the things like what these guys are doing. Because I went down to the Allstate Festival because my sister had qualified as a soloist. So our mm -hmm. whole family went down there to watch to support her for that. So that's where I saw. So I went back up and I approached Evan Wood, Matt Orgel, and Brian Alderman, you know, some awesome people that mm -hmm. are legends in this community mm -hmm. and other where they are now. Um, but yeah, we formed a high school quartet called Booth Street Quartet. And it was uh, named after the Booth Street Bridge. Um, because we thought it sounded cool. <laughs> and the Booth Street is the street right in front of Reno High, so it made sense. And uh, we did a Washoe County Choral Festival, and we did really well. And there was, a, there, was an, there was an actual member of the Barbershop Harmony Society that was one of the adjudicators for the Washoe County Choral Festival that year. And he's like, you guys are awesome. You guys need to go to compete at this Barbershop Harmony Society competition hmm. in Bakersfield. Because you guys are awesome. You guys would do great, and it would change your life. It's super fun. I'm like, sign me up. That would be awesome. Had no idea that exists. He's like, you need to go see your local barbershop chapter. And I'm like, oh, okay. They, that's that's just a normal thing. Every every city just has a barbershop chapter. I don't know if every city has a barbershop <laughs> chapter. A lot of a lot of cities have barbershop chapters. It's uh, they're members of the Barbershop Harmony Society, and um. Yeah, they uh, they they form a choir mm -hmm. and they just sing together. Sometimes it's the average choir is probably like fifteen members. Mm -hmm. Okay, average age is probably over sixty five, between Makes sixty five sense. and seventy years old. You know, yep. I'm um, not saying that there aren't like some young people in there, but per capita, the average chorus is a bunch of old guys. Yep. You know, um, yeah, and they all know the same ten, fifteen songs, and they all just jam out. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's and it's the best if. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with barbershop, it's it's incredible. So <laughs> so if uh, if I wanted to like go to the local barbershop chapter in Reno, where's that? Well, right now they're meeting at my church that I'm the at St. Paul's Episcopal, where my wife and I are music ministers. Right now they're meeting there with us um, and working there on Tuesday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's and pretty we cool. Have, and there it's open to everyone. We have a show. 
uh, that's open to the public for that we're doing for Art Town. We're combining with uh, Amy Fleming uh, and the local Sweet Adeline Chorus, uh, High Desert Harmony, and we're coming, coming, combining to do a Art Town show, and what? that's gonna be awesome. That's July fifteenth, but I would make it to a few rehearsals before <laughs> if you want to be on that show. July fifteenth. Yeah, and uh, that's at Wingfield Park. And that what time? I don't remember what time that is, but you can look it up at the Art Town for sure. All the Art Town uh, details. Um, but anyway, yeah, they can come and sing there. But a lot of towns have uh, barbershop chorus chapters. But anyway, long we went to the so back back to my story. Yeah. We me. went to the Reno Silver Dollar Chorus, and uh, they welcomed us with open arms. And as that's just how the barbershop culture is, very very open they love they love their youth they love encouraging that because the average age is really high so in order to mm -hmm. have longevity in the genre they really spend a lot of their money putting like promoting youth activities so they paid for all they paid all of our expenses for all four of us and our high school director Mr. David Gaunt to go down to Bakersfield and we took second place it was one of the best weekends of my entire life we got to see OC Times, uh, it was in 2008, and OC Times won the gold medal that year, but before they won the gold medal, they had to go to a prelim, and they sang right in front of our face. Uh, OC Times, for those that don't know, uh, Corey Hunt sings bass in OC Times, and he's a local kid from mm -hmm. around town. Um, he owns uh, one of the new tap houses in town, too. I can't remember specifically. But anyway... Um, but yeah, and then from there, I just got what they call the barbershop bug, and I just have dedicated <laughs> dedicated every moment that I can and every spare bit of passion that I can, you know, to building my skill set so that I can try to have my moment on stage, like what I saw these incredible quartets making, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, so now then, full circle, you know, that was 2008, and it's... 2022 now mm -hmm. so after all that time you know i finally got a quartet in the right place at the right time and we finally qualified for the international competition so it feels really exciting to finally have crossed that threshold international barbershop competition it sounds so so intense to me it is it's the best <laughs> it's it's the insane top level. it's insanely top level uh, <laughs> it's so real, great. Real fast, could you say the names of the people in your quartet? Never Too Late, right? Yeah. And also, could you say uh, their parts? Yeah, Never Too Late. Uh, our bass singer is Jean-Paul Deschambeau, and he sings the bass part. He's a local local singer. A lot of people know about him. Our baritone is Kevin Shoemaker. Uh, he's uh, best known for being the lead singer of the local heavy metal band. Um Wolves of Verdi. Wolves and, of Verdi. Yeah, they're they're awesome. And he is an incredible singer. <laughs> and it's like having a having a metal singer singing in the bass clef has been what I did not realize that I've needed this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. so great. Um he's just got a really bright voice and but Wolves of Verdi, their uh their album's free on YouTube to listen to. It's all originals and they're local. They're incredible. They sound Wolves of so Verdi good. on YouTube. And we'll we'll try to find yeah. that link. We'll put that link on there. Yep. And um and then I'm the lead singer. I sing lead and then barbershop that's at the second tenor line in the sheet music. So it's not mm -hmm. at the top of the bar, but we're still in the treble clef with the eight va. So for those of us that know music, that means um, treble clef, but not in the same treble clef that you would see in the soprano and alto lines. So it's still written. It's not in the bass clef like you would see for traditional uh, choral music, but we get a treble clef with an eight va. So that way, the eight va just means everything's an octave lower mm -hmm. so that we can just read treble clef so that the part writing makes more sense. Mm -hmm. And then our tenor is Ken Martin and... Uh, yeah, I've been singing with Ken Martin for like almost nine years now. And he uh, he is uh, from all over the place. He's from Nashville, Tennessee, Orlando, Florida, St. Louis, Missouri. I think St. Louis, Missouri, I'm pretty sure that's his home. That's where his mother lives now. 
And he lives up in Incline, so he drives uh, about 45 minutes every week to get to rehearsal. So he he sacrifices a lot to be in this group, and we love him to death. He is actually a baritone, though, but he sings all power falsetto. I was about to the say. the tenor part. Because he's not. Yeah, he sings the bar- He sing- He's a baritone, but he sings all power falsetto. Mm-hmm. So and, and you and you like the sound with that? Oh yeah, it's great. Well, with barbershop, it's it really lends itself. The the tenor part is really more about really riding overtones. Mm. Where so bass and barbershop is really designed for heroic baritone, like really nice strong baritone, and then the baritone line is really whatever voice part the tenor is, the lead is. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a tenor singing lead, you're going to want a tenor singing baritone. If you've got a baritone singing lead, you're going to want a baritone singing baritone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if you've got a baritone singing lead, you can have a true tenor singing tenor, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just voice sizes and things like that. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Get crazy. But the balance with Barbershop, it's complicated, but it's it's awesome. Because it's truly, you truly have to have that pyramid effect. Mm but also rules can be askewed at times. So askewed. <laughs> yeah. Did I make up a word? <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. You didn't make a word. That's up a, a real word. word. Yeah. No, that. Yeah, no. I always think of uh, being. I was in a music theory class, and you know, one of the things they tell you is don't cross, don't cross parts. Like the tenor should never go below where the bass line yeah, is. Yeah, barbershop does that sometimes. And, yeah, I see that stuff in all sorts of music. All barbershop s- does that weird stuff. Um, if we have time, I would love to talk just a little bit about the history of Barbershop. Barbershop was founded by um, African Americans, and it was called oh. Barbershop because it was performed in barbershops. Huh. So back in the 1800s, African American people were not allowed to perform in churches or inside of concert halls. Hmm. So they performed inside of barbershops. Hmm. So, and they weren't allowed inside of musical institutions to learn the music that was ordained the way it's done by dead white European males. Oh, yeah, you know? those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've heard that before, right? <laughs> but, Never. But Never. they weren't allowed into musical institutions where they taught, you know, all of the musical notation taught by white people in Europe. Mm-hmm. So they went and they just made up their own part writing rules. And, mm-hmm. that's, and it's strikingly wonderful. But it's also... Um, it's based around the layman's voice, you know, the layman, the layman, the, like the, the non trained mm-hmm. singer, the mm-hmm. untrained singer, the person the that hasn't person. spent decades increasing their range mm-hmm. to sing outlandish things to be have the appearance of just being virtuosic. You know, they sing what is comfortable in their voice, mm-hmm. the voice that they use to speak every day. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. barbershop mm-hmm. is very close in harmony. It's very yeah. close. So. There's not sometimes sometimes there's exceptions where they have really rangy stuff, but if you look at the original barbershop music, the chords are very close together. Like yeah. you won't see them super spread out very often. It's just like thirds. Well, it's four part harmony, but they're they're dom- they're seventh chords. Yeah. You know, but they're super tight and strangely voiced all the time. Mm. Based on, you know, who sings what best, I'm sure. Like, oh, it rings better when Benjamin sings that note. And that, it rings better kinda, when I go up and sing that. But that's it's kind of like, interesting to to think about. So so um, so barbershop originated within African-American culture. Do yes. You, is, is there a lot like when you're going to that international level, like what kind of other peoples are at that international level? Well, right now uh, at international, it's pretty it's it's really great they've actually just induced uh everyone in harmony obviously african-american people are allowed to sing barbershop now um i can't remember the exact date it was a long long time ago so there's been a lot of healing since then obviously but but still um but there's they've they've just allowed women to join the society just this year or Mm -hmm. just in the last couple of years now women are allowed to compete so it's not a male only Dang. competition. It's male and female in the last and mixed couple quartets. Years. No, this is the first year because the, the last couple yeah. of years there was the pandemic, right? So they they right, took three years right, off, right, right. Mm-hmm. and they spent that whole time being like, "How can we keep up with the times?" Mm-hmm. And it's and I think it's great. It's called Everyone in Harmony Initiative, and they um, it's about allowing people of all genders and all and all genders to 
compete on the International Barbershop Harmony Society stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wonderful. There's been a, a lot of backlash from a lot of older members, obviously. There's some stuff because everywhere is going to have its controversy. But the Barbershop Harmony Society, do or die, is heading in a really nice progressive direction. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things I remember seeing, I, I think, was this whole thing around uh, the names of singers, like uh, a bass, a tenor, a soprano, an alto, and traditionally a soprano and an alto being a female voice mm -hmm. and a tenor uh, and a bass being a male, male voice. voice. Right. But it really being more about like what notes are you hitting right. rather than it being uh, uh, yeah. one gender or the other gender kind of thing. Yeah, we have fun, we have fun new words like malto. <laughs> what, is it, what is that? So, oh. so they did relabel it. Malto. I don't know. Well, no, it's what is not official. Malto? I've just heard Malto. <laughs> what is a Malto? Like, it's men that can sing alto or altos Mal that can sing tenors. <laughs> Malto. So what is a soprano? I don't know. A I don't know. I had, I, I, had, I had only heard Malto before, Masano. but I loved it. It's Masano. It's great. Malto, <laughs> Masano, <laughs> Masano, and Malto. I love and it. And then uh, what there tenor would be Fenner. <laughs> And bass would be fa face, fist, face. Face, dude. There we go. <laughs> F -A fast. Fast. Fast and the fast Furious. Fast and the Furious 12. <laughs> It'll be a thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. To a theater near Paul, Paul Walker will be CGI'd in. For sure. How'd we get there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me, <coughs> getting <coughs> over a cold. Not a cold. That's okay. Don't worry. More, about more it. like a, a an allergy. Like every every it's single definitely person. Definitely not Omicron. Okay. It's definitely not <laughs> COVID. Every person that I know has has been like just right here, just raw. You oh. know, everybody. Have you been sick lately at all? I was sick. So I don't know if you know many first year teachers, but man, you're sick the whole year long so i was sick for an entire year i'm finishing up i'm in my half my second my first half of my second year now but i was sick for like a whole year and i luckily i haven't been that sick since where are you teaching at uh right now i'm teaching at natchez elementary school and polykitas elementary school as their music teacher music teacher yeah. is it the best oh you it's like kids? the best kids are the best yeah kids are the best if anything's bad it's always the adults yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's always somebody trying to control something that they're they shouldn't be trying to control. You just like run the program, and the kids are the best. Kids are the greatest, you know. So. Yeah, that's great that you can uh, bring music to kids. Yeah, it is. It's very special. And do you ever like come in and perform for them barbershop wise? Uh, I have not done that yet because unfortunately. Uh, and fortunately, they make good money so they can afford to do the barbershop, which is an expensive hobby. But they're administrators, school administrators and professors, mm -hmm. so they work all this all school day long. Yeah. Um, our baritone not only is a heavy metal band lead singer and a barbershop baritone, but he teaches wildlife ecology at the University of Nevada. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And Ken it's... Martin is a school administrator at a private school up in, truck, up in uh, an incline village. Find the time for all of it. It's yeah, probably, it's hard. I would love to yeah. perform for my kids. I pr back in the day in old quartets, I used to, back when I had a lot more flexibility. I wasn't a teacher; I was a student. So I would go and I would take my quartets and we'd perform for my wife's elementary schools. Back before she opened up Teach Out Music, she was teaching elementary school. Um, we would go out and perform for her schools, and it was the best. You know, it was super mm -hmm. fun. We'd take like fun little instruments and say stupid, <laughs> stupid dad jokes and sing some barbershop. It was awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, uh, teach Out Music? Oh, Teach Out Music, yes. Teach Out Music is uh, this incredible um, piano group class studio that my wife runs, and I support her. <laughs> 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 because I, I'm gone all day. So she, ru she runs a business called Teach Out Music. It's uh, right on the corner of uh, Audi Boulevard and, and Pyramid. And uh, it's just right there with that next to that child dentistry in there. And we teach piano group classes, and it's awesome. We, we see five kids at a time. 
And so it's all all kids that you teach, or is it adults? Well, too, or we did have a few adult, a few adult students, but mainly we're focusing on marketing towards the kids. Yeah, for the most part, it's what my wife kind of wants to do. I did. I had a voice department there earlier this year, but I closed it down because I couldn't run a voice studio and two music programs at the same time. It was just yep. too much. Yep. Mm -hmm. The balance, especially is with the COVID, we had to do two programs, multiple programs at every school because we couldn't bring people together. So we had to spread them apart. So yeah. we had to do like three times more programs. Singing over Zoom is the worst. Singing over Zoom, I you know I've grown. At first, I kind of was like, eh, but I study over Zoom with mm -hmm. my professor, and I love it. It's great. I as it you. Studying singing over Zoom isn't great unless you have somebody that's good enough to teach you over Zoom. You know, like it, yeah. there's a threshold. Mm -hmm. There's always a threshold. If you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing and likes the Zoom format, they're going to teach you mm -hmm. through Zoom. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do a good job because it's what they want to do. It's what they like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I didn't like Zoom learning when I finished up my co uh, college degree when COVID first hit. I thought that stunk. But also... My, my voice teachers and my coaches and teachers, they didn't want to teach over Zoom either. So that was a thing. And then once I finished up with that, I found a new teacher who was promoting to only do Zoom. Wow. And they were passionate for Zoom. So I started doing that, and I could access expert barbershop information that was on the other side of the country mm -hmm. right in my own living room with my whole barbershop quartet there, which is the main reason why we got so good all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's because of Zoom teaching. We had access to very rare barbershop, high-level barbershop information that used to, you can only get that information by either being in a chorus or studying at an institution where one of these people taught. But yeah. because of the pandemic and the opening up of Zoom, we were able to get that information and not have to travel back and forth for decades. You know, we were able to just steal that. Well, we didn't steal, we paid him. But <laughs> we just, it was all well, over opposite, Zoom and it was, paid him, but. <laughs> it was just, you get to work with whoever you want in the world with Zoom. You, know, you can work yeah. with Eric Whitaker for composition. Yeah, You can, you can work with, with people, right? Hans Zimmer on film scoring. <laughs> if you yeah. wanted to, if you had enough money, because you, you don't need Hans money. Zimmer to get on an airplane and come to your convention. He can just wake up, take a shower, go to his living room for 15 minutes and drop all those gems. I have a, I have, I have a question or two for you. Number one. <laughs> Sorry, uh, there was a little motorcycle that went by. We all just kind of looked at each other real fast. Uh, first <laughs> one is, um, could you sing for us? Sure. Would you sing like just a little, little something, little sure. any, a little anything? Yeah. He's he's preparing, drinking water, pulling out the phone, scrolling to something. Don't know. It's a pitch pipe. Uh, pitch pipe. He's getting the pitch pipe out. Okay. Just to make sure. I'm sure you can all hear that. <laughs> this is the night. It's a beautiful night. And they call it Bella Notte. <laughs> you go. Look at the skies. They have stars in their eyes on this lovely Bella Notte. Side by side with your loved ones, you'll find enchantment here. The night will weave its magic spell when the one you love is <laughs> that was Thank great you. yeah that so that's one of the the numbers that you do with your barbershop no no you just that's pulled just, that out when somebody like, asks me hey can you sing something for me really quick that's the go-to 
Well, it's, yeah, I love that one. It makes me happy. I usually get lifted. Other people usually know that one. Yep. If I were to sing you a barbershop, something from my barbershop quartet, it would sound funky. Sound like it's missing some parts, maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. I could t I could show you how that all goes down really quick if you want. It's actually quite fascinating Do it. if we have time. Do it. We, okay. have, we have time. We definitely have time. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so how barbershop works... Um, I'll go ahead and I'll sing the melody line for you first, okay? So here's the melody line to a song called Heart of My Heart, okay? So this is the second tenor, what you'd find in the second tenor line on Barbershop. Heart of my heart, I love you. Life would be not without you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the melody. Okay, and then the barber. Then, if you listen, I'll sing. I'll go ahead and I'll sing the baritone line for you. How I was describing it earlier. Mm -hmm. It's not w what you would imagine a baritone line would be in like a choral piece at all. Watch how it mirrors. The melody mm -hmm. instead of like just purely supporting the melody mm -hmm. it's a counter melody rather mm. instead heart of my heart i love you life would be not without you yeah mm -hmm. this but you didn't really it didn't really go low and the, the bass part is a lot more just all of those things, okay? Because the baritone line notes get replaced by either the melody when it goes low mm -hmm. or the baritone when the melody goes high. So they mirror each other in the chords. Mm. And the bass part takes care of a lot of the dominance and subdominance down on the bass part. Heart of my heart, I love you. Life would be not without you. Yeah, so that one, I'm obviously a tenor, so I'm going to be scraping <laughs> yeah. for those low notes, right? What was that? But, <laughs> what was that note? Oh, I don't even know. Yeah. An A, good for you. Yes. You. Yes. So the bass part really kind of fills in all of those things. Barbershop bass is really mobile. It's a very mobile bass part yeah, um, compared to traditional like basses that yeah. kind of just like lay that foundation out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a jumpy bass line, which is really fun because they can do that. And um, and then barbershop tenor really is just falsetto. Heart of my heart. I don't sing it in falsetto, but I also don't sing tenor in barbershop quartets usually. Mm -hmm. Heart of my heart, I love you. Life would be not without you. Yeah. yeah. So it's really based around the lead and the bass. So you want, we spend most of our time uh, duetting the lead and the bass parts together while the baritone and the tenor coach the core sound mm. and then we move on from there but that's how barbershop works and that's how she works and that's how she works that's pretty cool i uh honestly the entire time that you were doing that i was like man when i'm editing this if i were to take all the four of those parts and lay them over each other <laughs> yeah you could it would work would, would i don't know if the how, tempo would line up yeah was, yep that's the only thing right but you got all the notes there for sure we'll post a link post a link we'll just put it we'll put it maybe at the end or something yeah and you can watch you can listen to the you whole listen song to those the that four little little parts right there i uh, know i should we i should have prepared a multi-track for you just sing that. You though. should. You should have just brought it. You should have just brought it. I popped just brought out three your, other me's right here. Three other you's. Let me just get my uh, <laughs> my vocal. What's that thing where the the throat singing, where they do like two different oh him oh notes, oh Himalayan throat yes. singing. Um, Is that it? Mongolian. <laughs> Mongolian. Oh, Are the Himalayas I can't in remember. Mongolia? I can't remember. No. 
I don't know. I'm uh, yeah, geography's not especially that part of the world. I'm not up on my geography. In you're geography, dude. Geography. Yeah, you're geography. Uh, my geography. You know, I have um, uh, two other questions that I were was thinking. Number one, so if somebody wanted to just hire you or your barbershop quartet, if if I was just like a wealthy somebody who's just like watching this, and I'm like, oh my god, that guy is so good. I want that barbershop quartet for my next party. Well, how much would that run? Uh, well, for a private party, I mean, it, it all varies. Like, I mean, if you just want us to show up and sing like one song, you know, like 400 bucks. Yeah. But if you want us to show up and do like a 30 minute show, you yeah. know, and dress up like porpoise dolphins and all the things, all and, the know, things, like do water, the package, aerial. what's no. the, what's the name but of the package? But if we do a full show, you know, it's like, it's 700 bucks right now. And that yeah. price will only go up as, you know, exclusivity happens, you know, with more people asking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's... the supply and demand depends on how busy we are you know 700 dang that's a for for a half hour yeah that's a pretty good price yeah 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 I yeah like that. well we love we love doing it we just need enough to make sure we can afford the gas and get a little bit in the bank for the quartet all know? this uh all the concerts you're doing are free though right this one yes least. yes all this the, one's yeah. free donations are are welcome um local MC legend Ben Gallagher will be doing the MC work, and he's hilarious and British. Does he have watermelons? He might. Like the uh, is he the Gallagher three? I don't even know what that is. Gallagher? Maybe. Yeah, there's a comedian. The Gal- <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. No. Oh my God. So there's oh neither of you do. Okay, so there was this comedian <laughs> Gallagher. Yeah, there was this comedian, and he would bring out like watermelons. His stick was like there was a bunch of other stuff he did, but he'd bring out watermelons and he'd smash them on stage. And if you were in the first couple rows, like you got hit with the watermelons. You know that was like his his bit. And then his I think his son became the Gallagher too, and started doing the same the same shit. <laughs> anyway, I guess nobody knows, but Gallagher <laughs> was a thing at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, sounds good. He was a comedian. Um, the other thing, oh, what was it? I had a question for you. I remember now. So I remember uh, way back when, because I've known you for a moment, you used to sell vacuums. Is that right? Yeah, curvy vacuum. Curvy vacuums. Yeah, I did that for a long time. You did, And you don't do that anymore? Uh, no. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Because it's it's very interesting to me that you used to sell vacuums and it was door to door. Yeah. 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 Tell me a little bit about that because I was always. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember you no, once I telling me my time as a, a little door- bit about that. My and time it was is interesting. A, my time as a door to door salesman uh, was probably uh, one of the most enlightening periods of my life. It really it really showed me what people are like. Yeah. You know, like what real people are like when they're re- living their real lives and they're not putting on their faces and their masks and things like that. Being a door-to-door salesman is amazingly exciting. Mm-hmm. And also it can be the worst. And it can be such a drag. But <laughs> yeah. um, the thought of having to wake up in the morning and go knock on a stranger's door that did not wake up and it did not expect guests to the, come to their home and even today's day and age is crazy. I haven't done it since the pandemic, so I can't imagine how much harder it is to do now. Since before the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, going and knocking on doors uh, to random strange people's house is the most unique experience ever. You find that genuine, generally people are very kind though. You mm-hmm. know, as long as you're kind of, you act, if you, if you have, if you have a badge on and you're just obviously delivering, you know, what you're doing mm-hmm. <laughs> in the most very straightforward way, you know, most people will op- will welcome you in with open arms. You know, the trick is to not hide anything and be completely and bluntly honest and yeah. also kind and enthusiastic and funny and entertaining at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is just to do all of those things without making it seem like you're working at all. You're yeah. Just seamless. Well, it has to be fun because people don't want to like work. Yeah. Right. People want, you know, people like when they come up, when they, when they come to the door and they weren't expecting you, you got to be better. You got to be the best commercial that they've ever seen. You know, you've got to open, they've got to open the door and they've got to want to interact with that commercial. 
Right. Like right An away. Interactive commercial. You've got to like want to pull that commercial how do you, in. How do you do that? Well, I usually <laughs> – well, I'm uh, – I was just – pretty i just kind of have an honest face for one you know i've been told <laughs> i've been told a lot by a lot of people i just have an honest face so like when i come to your door and i'm like hey would you like a free carpet cleaning you know people are like <laughs> this is better but, than what's on tv that's you know how you, that's how you do it you just like, hey do sometimes you, you know like you got to use all your tools you know so you know so looking you just... goofy so people I don't know. It depends on the situation. So I'll give you a situation. Give me a situation. I'll knock on the door and you pretend to be somebody coming to the door and I'll pretend to be a okay. door to door salesman. You want to play with me? Yeah, let's do All it. Right, let's here we go. play. Okay. Okay. It starts with a friendly knock. Okay. okay. Not just, you don't want to be knocking like you're the police. Okay. You don't okay. want to be going like vacuum cleaner salesman. That's, yeah. Because yeah, you see that. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to do that. So <laughs> it was all about friendly knock. That's, so you okay. go like friendly shave knock. and a haircut. Two bits because oh, yeah. they think it's grandpa, yeah, or maybe their friendly neighbor yeah, next okay. door. They don't yeah. know that it's the chubby yeah. salesman. Okay, grandpa. So I open it up, and there you are. Hey, how's hey, it going? Great. I'm just, uh, well, I'm just making <laughs> dinner right now. Who, who, why are you here? <laughs> Seems a little early for dinner. What are you having? Yeah, Smells uh, good. Uh, yeah, uh, spaghetti. <laughs> hey, uh, so d why, why are you here? I understand. I'm a complete stranger. You didn't yeah. invite me over for dinner. It sure smells good. I wish you had. But yep. my name's Adam Teachout. I'm actually here with the Kirby Company. You've ever you've heard of Kirby before, right? Yes. Your grandma probably had one in her closet. She, she did. Probably used it as a boat anchor before, you know. Okay. Yeah. It's super heavy. They're not that heavy anymore. You don't say. No, you want to see one? Um, well, I'm just making dinner right now, so totally maybe if, cool, man. you know, I I I kind of got to go go make dinner. Yeah, no worries. Hey, I tell you what. You see that spot just right there on the carpet? Uh, yep. If I could zap that out in a few minutes, would you just let me do that? Um, uh, vacuum's just right out in the car. It's already on. God, you sure do have an honest face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't cost you a dime. Won't charge you. And that way, you know, what vacuum are you using right now? Uh, well, so I got this vacuum um from my old roommate a that while ago. Great. That sounds great. Um, I know you're short on time. My bottom, my point is, I want you to keep that. I'm not here to threaten your. I'm not here to threaten you and your relationship with your vacuum here. But I get a lot of credit from my company if I just zap that out, just so you have the exposure. It just takes a minute. Would you help me out? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Awesome. I'll be right back. And then you know that's where it starts. You just pull a dirt pad out, and, and then, then they're like, in. "Oh my god!" <laughs> and then, and then while and then what? it takes like it takes like five minutes to set up the vacuum, so I'll just be like, "Here, just make your burrito, dude. I'm gonna set this up." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and while I'm in there in the living room, and then by then I've got like all my stuff all over the living room. You really, you're so, really kind of like on the ride at that point. So like once you have your wares out, it's it's how how often once you're in the door, would you be able to sell something? You think? Like, uh, it depends on the. I mean, so it's tough because. Kirby's are very expensive. They're like three thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a three thousand dollar vacuum. Yeah, exactly. God. So and it was wow. people love those things right away. Mm -hmm. It's about finding the ho finding a house, and knocking on a house and like knowing enough about life and the world, to see good credit when you see it, and to mm. see somebody that is in a position to spend three thousand dollars on a vacuum. Mm. You can see it by, oh, do you own this house or you rent this house? Oh, know your you know, like, are you in the market for a vacuum cleaner? Oh, you have a vacuum cleaner. What kind of vacuum is it? Is it a $700 vacuum? Did they buy a $3,000 vacuum before? Mm. You know, so like, and also a huge one was just, you know, getting both decision makers home at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, so like during the day in a lot of these mining towns out in Nevada, they have, uh, they just only have one person's at work all day. And then yeah. mom alone or dad alone. Where you get inside the house and you do the whole demo, and they're like, "Oh, I can't get it because you know oh, I can't ask. make a decision." Go ask my husband. Gotta ask you know? my hubby. Exactly. So, but when you run those shows, you know, you just you just every every single thing you do, you're just like, "Oh my gosh, what would hubby think about that? Mm. What do you think hubby would be upset if this dirt weren't in the house?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Let me ask you this: Does hubby do the cleaning or do you do the cleaning? Okay. Does he go to the mine all day while you vacuum, or do you vacuum? Well, does he vacuum while you go to the mine all day? Who knows? Who tracks the dirt in the house? You know, like, is he really going to tell you what to use? 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> so we sold a lot Damn. like that. You know, Damn. but they also, you know, they have a lot. They make a lot of good money out there, and they're bored out in Winnemucca yeah. and Ely and all these little mining towns. You know, so they just like they see me at their door, and they're like, <gasps> "Whoa, whoa, an actual salesman!" I know, and honey, this is like, like the guy from Big Fish. <laughs> exactly, dude. <laughs> that yeah. guy's at our door. <laughs> that was the best, dude. And that, yeah, that. And the way he described being a door to door salesman in that movie was spot awesome. on. Well, from my experience. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. for everybody's experience. A lot of times people will go up to one door and somebody will slam the door in their face and they'll just be done because they can't handle that rejection. Because it's tough, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's I'm, tough. I'm sure it's a lot. Well, that's, that's what I think about it. That's why I wanted to ask is just I can't imagine going door to door to door and just like – getting rejected by probably a lot of people. Well, do you got to understand it's like you're not that's not going to happen to you if if you make the choice that it's not going to happen to you. Huh. Like if you're just going to be positive at every single door, you're going to find somebody that wants to help you out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cuz a lot of the times it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy with those people that go and they're just like uh-huh. I really don't I'm really not comfortable going into the stranger's house. I'm mm-hmm. really not comfortable just vacuuming up all their shit and like turning my back on them while they go and eat in the kitchen while I clean this disgusting shit off their floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> a lot of the times people like nine times out of 10 people are not down with that. Mm-hmm. So they go door to door and they have that energy on them that, yeah, I don't really want to do that. that. kind of Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it helped. I started out as just a canvasser, so I actually got to sign people up to do disgusting jobs, and they didn't even know what it was going to be. But I was so good at getting into houses, so I would just be like, don't worry about what you're doing. I want to make sure that you're in front of somebody that can afford to buy this vacuum if you do a good enough job cleaning. You know, and they have no sales experience, and they're not getting paid an hourly wage. Mm. So they're desperate because they have no skill set to get into a house. Yeah. But I can get into a house like that. So, mm. like, to, to them, I'm like this genie. <laughs> I can just get into a house because they just don't want to do it. They don't know how to do it. They can't do it. So it made me it made me super valuable to that company. You just have that little smile. He's yeah. Like, hey. Exactly. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But some, the, some things you can't train. Some things are just personality. And sometimes you just – I'm kind of like a show sometimes. It gets, mm-hmm. And but, it's an energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and – People want to take a shot because they're bored. <laughs> yeah. You know? So but every day you get a door. Yeah. And salesman. then it would form. And that's how I met my wife. I, met, I taught my wife how to canvas in Kirby. Oh. She, she had quit the music teaching job because she was burnt out. So and then she just decided to go join Kirby. And that's how I met my wife was teaching her how to knock doors. And I thought you were going to say you knocked on her door. Oh no! I, Her she husband was wasn't no. Home. She worked on the van with me. She worked on the van with me, and she was a vacuum salesman. She was good too. Yeah, yeah. She's she went and knocked selling. a couple doors with me, and she just learned. And she just learned. She was able to knock herself in. And yeah, so she's good at doing that now too. She's Both good at everything. I'm. I'm. Sh- <laughs> so you two are like probably a little persuasive team together. We can be. Yeah, we can be. You get yeah. in there covertly. I God, if you had a kid or something, that kid's. Phew, who they, knows they, what happened to that kid? Dude. Yeah, they, they they wouldn't know what's going on, you know. And then like thirty years from now, uh, their mind would probably they would be on a different level, you know what I mean? Maybe, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, I heard this philosophy recently. Um, it was uh, the philosophy was the son of Kanye. It was that <laughs> Don, that Donald Glover was trying to be the son of Kanye, right? Oh. Um, and and it's a really true philosophy because. He's trying to do all these things that Kanye has tried to do but hasn't necessarily succeeded at all, you mm-hmm. know? But Don Glover is in a multimedia kind of sense, you know? And I thought about it earlier when you were talking about the sense that you would uh, you'd try the French horn, right? Yeah. And it was kind of natural to you. Yeah. You're your father's son. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for him, he just did it. And it's like, for me, my dad's a chef, you mm-hmm. know? And I wouldn't say that I can just, like, go out and cook, really, but... I will say that cooking just kind of makes sense. Yeah. And I also just kind of like, there are all these little minute skills that I'm just like, oh yeah, it's just that. And other people are like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like I'm very cleanly in the kitchen. I've always been very cleanly. I work, I I clean as I go. Yeah. When I'm, when I'm cooking and I've always done that. And other people just like, you know, mise en place and shit like that is just kind of, 
Yeah, dude. stuff stuff I've always kind of just known how to do. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a weird concept, but I really I I enjoy the human experience of uh, of children and and evolution and and stuff like that. Um, Definitely, dude. You know, and I would say that uh, you are no exception. I mean, you're you're an evolved sense of your your dad. You know, are yeah, there, definitely. There are any other like hidden things we were not talking about, like, like talent wise that you got? Yeah, my grandfather was. Uh, he's in the Bull Weevil Brass, uh, Bull Weevil Brass Jazz Band. They were a celebrity jazz band. Their album, they have like five five albums on YouTube. Bull Weevil. Bull Weevil Boys, Boys. the jazz band. Uh, the Bull Weevil Jazz Band. The Bull Weevil Jazz Band. He's uh he plays uh rhythm banjo in that group. And he's great. He was blinded in World War II inspecting detonators. Uh, so he has these great big old black glasses on this old sketched out record album cover. It's mm. really cute. That really yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds cool. Yeah. It's, you, you, it's, you said it's cute, really, but it well, sounds cool. Well, it's cute because they're not like actual pictures. They're like, because this was back in the day, back before there were cameras that took mm. these pictures. So they had... An artist sketched their likeness mm-hmm. on the top, on the front of an album, so it looks a little cartoony, mm-hmm. and that's why I say it looks cute. So, because it mm-hmm. kind of looks like the memories I have of my grandfather, but like in a Sunday morning cartoon almost. Sunday morning cartoon. <laughs> it's really they're really they're really great little album covers, but but yeah, they uh, they performed all over the place, uh, and um, I've got a lot of co- just a lot of concert musicians in my in my lineage is all. Mm-hmm. But what about you? I mean, any, any hidden talents that you have? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, like you, you really, Adam really is a very <laughs> like he he's been singing for us. He's been performing the whole time. He's a very dude, talented musician. That's really that's really kind of um, you. And you always have been. And I mean, the energy you speak of, uh, like watch. Uh, I have seen you on stage before. Uh, you have a very affable energy about you in general but when you're on stage um you have presence that's really what it is i think that what what you're looking for with like you going door to door you have a presence you know <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah. Have, you have a presence not everybody has a, a, kind a of strong this... presence and yours is an innocent one it, it can get me into it can it can tarnish relationships and flourish relationships i tell you that like yeah i'm definitely i definitely can be a lot around for anybody to handle but also if i'm too much you know look for less you know what i mean yeah i have one of my best friends john uh canauer he went to he was at grad school at unr he used to work out with me every day he told me i should get that tattooed on my arms he's like you know you should get a tattoo right here that says if i'm too much look for less because i am a lot (laughs) (laughs) and <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I'm a lot, but also like, you know, that's that's true. That's true. It's hard for me to gauge sometimes because people want to be kind because I'm overwhelming. It's like a waterfall of energy sometimes being around. Me. So it's like, oh, my God. You know, sometimes I feel like a waterfall, but like in the best kind of way. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good to have that kind of energy, though. Yeah. I mean, and you understand what yeah, your energy is like. So uh, that's, I mean, you're very uh, powerful for knowing such things. I, 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 it's helped, it's helped with a lot of things in life, like the Kirby thing, you know, Mm -hmm. just learning how to press the button and turn it on whenever I want and Mm -hmm. get paid for it. That was nice, you know, Mm -hmm. and it gave me an excuse to kind of just like learn to almost weaponize that talent. Yeah, you've honed the skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah over you, years. you've honed yeah. the skill for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's a very interesting uh interesting thing. Yeah. I um I recently with my barbershop quartet um made a bunch of cold calls. Before this was before we qualified for international. Yeah. We didn't know if we were going to qualify or not, but we needed some money to buy things for the quartet whether it be music legalization. Or anything. Mm -hmm. So I use that skill set in the barbershop quartet all the time. I call, you know, local country clubs, local uh, old folks' homes and stuff and negotiate shows in places Mm -hmm. that would never, ever have considered barbershop quartet putting on a show there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, why not? Your people will love it. You know, come Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then uh, we do, I put some, I put that, we did a, we do a strolling gig. Uh, not every Friday, but for the food truck Friday, you can catch us there sometimes. Ah. Doing some 
doing some busking over there. So you just like go there and kind of uh, do you just perform and put out a hat or? or yeah, we just the... we kind of walk around for big cl- clumps of people and just start going ham on them with our music, kind of like the way the Dapper Dan's do it at Disneyland. And that's Idlewild Park. Is Idlewild that where Park, yeah. They do Fruit Tech Fridays. And yeah. It's not it's not all of the Fridays, but no, it's on the Fridays where we don't have anything going on and we need money, so we go. <laughs> for sure. I... So there's really, but we'll announce it on our Facebook page. I was about to say, do you have a Facebook, Instagram? Yeah. Can yep. you give, the, give us the handles of all of your social medias? Yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah, definitely just, throw maybe th- maybe some links. We'll put the links, but just, just look up yeah. Never Too Late on Facebook, and it's got this picture on the Facebook page. Just Never Too Late Barbershop Quartet. It's, yeah, Never Too Late Barbershop Quartet. And you'll see this picture right here. Yeah, that's Cassie holding it up right there. And don't forget if, about our concert on June 4th either at 7.30 p.m. June 4th, 7.30 p.m. St. Paul's Episcopal, uh, 11.35. St. Paul's Episcopal. 12th Street Sparks. And uh, there's also going to be not just Barbershop, but my wife is going to be uh, releasing a brand new uh, percussion arrangement hmm. on the show. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's super, super, super good. She's a world-class percussionist. And uh, Robert Strong, another world-class percussionist, will also be doing some shenanigans on our show to mix it up along with our comedian MC. So it'll be a really great time. So if you're if you're looking to go see some live music for free, uh, for free, for free, very accessible. World class. World class international, international entertainment, great. barbershop, percussion, gets it all. Just uh, go check out Never Too Late on Facebook, Instagram for updates on all these things. We'll put all the links. Is there anything else that we missed? I don't think so. I think I think I that's think we uh, about it. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming in. Dude, thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate you. This is my first podcast, so this is super fun. Thank you, this Cassie. Is, this is Appreciate number. You. What is this? This is number five or six. We're do, we've done some out of order, but uh, yeah, like we're, this we're, is awesome in here for those of you that get all asked to come on the show. It's an awesome experience. It's thank thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Cassie's like and subscribe. I don't awesome. think I said that before. Like and subscribe um, if you haven't already. The subscribe button's over there. Maybe it's over there. I'm not sure. It's like down there. And then just the thumbs up. And uh, until next time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Until next time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Nice. We did it. Awesome. Let's get all those links. (laughs) Oh, my God. Let me send. I'm going to start sending those all to your phone now.